Hi, I'm Dolly Freeman with Teachers of Good Things. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to teach copy work and dictation the Charlotte Mason way. We're going to first talk about copy work and how this actually is done with the Charlotte Mason method. With her, with Charlotte Mason, she had always focused on having a perfect something in each lesson. Rather it be a perfect formation of a letter or a perfect slant or um, something along that line, but she really struck, she's really structured her philosophy around um, being able to master it and that the child do their best in everything that they're doing. She did not want the child to become developing bad habits in uh, sloppy formation. So she took a lot of care in making sure that the child was really forming their letters first and they were having a perfect something in every lesson and because of that she was able to keep the lesson short and the lessons productive. And so before copy work started that was her focus. She wanted the child to be able to form all of their, les their, their letters and their numbers um, and to be able to have them the best that they can do. And once that was done, uh, she would then move on to copy work. Uh, before I get into that, I want to share with you that Charlotte Mason used printing. She had her child, um, her children, actually be using printing, and it wasn't until she was into her uh, teaching career that she had found a new method of teaching handwriting and the handwriting was actually italics. And so I know that now I've heard a lot of talk over the last many years about when to teach cursive or starting out with cursive or starting out with italics. And so I'm going to just share some of my own personal insights from my homeschooling experience as well as the understanding that education is a life and so therefore we're training our children for their own life after school and how this whole thing comes into play. So what I would recommend is that you teach your child printing. Printing is something that needs to be put on every legal document, rather it be um, an application for a job or an application for a credit report or um, an application for buying a house or an application for a car loan, whatever it is, you always have to write in print. And it always has to be legible. And so it's really important to make sure that your child's printing hand is done in the same philosophy as Charlotte Mason, is that they're formed some kind of perfection in their handwritings in order to be able to, once they become an adult, to be able to fill out those important documents in very legible handwriting. Italics is very similar to that of printing. It's only slanted. And so um, it's a prettier way of actually writing. But it's not something that is still printed. And that is what is requested from all adults from the time that they're 18 and older whenever they're signing documents. So I think it's really important to be sure that your child has the ability to write very well in printing. Um, so I have always started my kids in printing. Now when it comes to cursive, you know, still following that same philosophy, uh, preparing them for life, I um, make sure that they have a very nice penmanship or a very nice cursive to signing their name because that is something that signatures involve and it is something that they're going to have to put on all of those documents. And so if your child is real excited to start cursive and you don't feel like they're quite quite ready because their penmanship or their manuscript isn't um, up to par where you would like that to be, then just have them practice their name again and again in cursive because that will prepare them for, for life and will be able to keep them happy in learning some of the formations of their actual um, cursive. And so that's, that's my own philosophy and understanding how Charlotte Mason used printing. Um, cursive wasn't even something that was then or done in her life, but italics was something that was introduced to her. And she did fall in love with that method, and she did recommend it. So, you know, you might want to actually look into italics as well if you're um, looking beyond just printing. A quote I want to share with you from Charlotte Mason is one that has really neat uh, concept to it. A book of their own, made up of their own choice words, should give them pleasure. 
Copy work to most children is not something I would describe as pleasure. I would describe it more of tedious or required. So when I saw this quote of Charlotte Mason's, I was intrigued from that last word, pleasure. And then I realized that in all of our homeschooling, I have required, for the most part, my own selections for their copy work, based off the things that they were reading, learning, um, coming across with quotes and such. Uh, so for me to see that, it really ignited me for my last two children that it wasn't until my older two were in high school that I actually gave them the pleasure of picking out their own copy work. So I would encourage you, if you're just starting out with copy work, you've been doing it for a while, try out this whole philosophy of Charlotte Mason of allowing them to pick out their own. So once you know your child is forming their letters correctly and they're ready for um, actual copy work, give them what Charlotte Mason would call a copy workbook and allow them to pick whatever from their own reading, from perhaps a Bible scripture or a quote, give them resources around where they're able to actually select their own. Uh, she actually mentioned in her original writings that they weren't long selections, they were short. The lessons for copy works should not be any more than five to ten minutes. And again, staying true with the whole idea of perfection in the lesson. So not that the whole lesson needs to be perfect, but that there was some form of perfection in that copy work lesson. Um, as the child gets older, they're going to be writing quicker. And so the amount of work that perhaps a first grader can do and perhaps a fifth grader can do will increase greatly, even with that five to ten minutes of copy work. You don't necessarily have to increase the time as the child gets older, but their own speed and their own ability will increase the length of how much they can put in. Um, during that time. Over the years, I've oftentimes had my children break up a larger selection over several copy working lessons um, a week, sometimes even lasting a month, if it was really a long um, requirement. Um, I don't know that they took pleasure in doing it over a period of time, but it was good thoughts and good things to capture that I really wanted my children to be able to have in their own hand. Some ideas for you to have as resources for your children for copy work would be um, having them maybe poems, uh, verses out of the Bible, um, chastisements, uh, having quotes from history, selections for some of their favorite books. Um, it, the list can go on, but there are so many things that are available for copy work that you could actually purchase and have for their own enjoyment to go through and find something that they would really enjoy. Um, it's, it depends on you. you. You know, like I had said, I had oftentimes assigned my children their own copy work based off from what they were learning or hearing that particular day. Um, so it fit with keeping them relevant to their studies. That is exactly how Charlotte Mason did copy work. It, copy work is probably one of the easiest methods of Charlotte Mason's that you can implement. Um, it would be very easy for you to um, have this become very pleasurable with a child. I can see her idea and her philosophy of having them select their own verses and putting them in to bring um, a, lot of, a lot of pleasure to the child, especially if doing it from the very beginning. So now let's talk about dictation the Charlotte Mason way. I would like to start off by reading a quote from Charlotte Mason. The whole secret of spelling lies in the habits of visualizing words from memory, and children must be trained to visualize in the course of their reading. This actual quote makes me realize that dictation or spelling shouldn't start until a child is well reading, a very fluent in reading. In order for them to be able to visualize a word, from their course of reading, you would understand that this wasn't something they they implemented right away. And so for me, in my experience with my son, who was a struggling reader, who was very horrific at his spelling, and really despised writing because of it, I can see that this was true to him. We tried several different kinds of spelling programs and really focused on the phonetics of why a word is spelled. 
the rules behind them, and lots of practice. And it was a fight uphill all the time. Short lessons were quickly forgotten because I needed him to learn how to read, and we were teaching him how to read through spelling. And so it's very backwards to that of the Charlotte Mason way. Charlotte Mason is saying here that spelling comes from the course of their reading because they were able to visualize words from their own reading courses. And so when I understood that and took an example of that of my child and his struggle with reading, it was when I realized that we, when we started dictation, he was a fluent reader at that point, still bad at spelling, but still in his process of developing um, quicker speed and as well as being able to build his confidence in understanding that he is learning. Once he had those experiences of a lot of books under his belt and um, feeling better about himself with his reading, I implemented dictation. Unaware of this quote and unaware that this was when dictation was actually started, it wasn't until I read her original series that I realized the timing in dictation. With that being said, um, dictation for my son started around the age of 13. And when we implemented it, we implemented it different than how Charlotte Mason implemented it. But what I will say to you is that it's right. It was through him being able to visualize the words because he never had the picture of what the word looked like. And so it was very difficult. It was like he had to memorize it rather than it becoming easy. So when I read in the original series of Charlotte Mason that a child of eight or nine were dictating a full paragraph, I realized that teaching reading through spelling wasn't it was backwards. And so I won't make that mistake again with my youngest child, and I didn't make it with my third child. So for that, I'm thankful. Um, with older children, so 10 and older, they were dictating one, two, or three pages. So knowing that the dictation was 10 minutes or so, these were not hard processes for these children. So it was understanding that they had been reading for a while in order for them to be able to visualize these words and being able to implement them with dictation and to implement them in this way. They would be given the selection that was going to be dictated for the purpose of not memorizing, but to be scanning through and seeing if there were anything that was standing out to the child that they were not able to actually spell. The child would then identify those words and say, I don't think I'll spell this one well. Um, and then the teacher also would point out words from the knowledge of that child and say, I think you might struggle with this word or this word as well. And so the teacher would have them take a mental picture and write it on the board for them. And when the student thought, okay, I have enough of it, she would erase it and see if the child was able to remember it. Um, the actual test would come through the dictation to see if a child was able to do it then. If the child misspelled a word wrong, she would quickly cover it up and have them process it again and write the the real word over it. So all of the practice that my son was doing of misspelling words because he was learning to read through spelling, was really detrimental to his ability of um, not only reading, but his, his problems with spelling, um, because he was constantly misspelling words, and that is what he was taking mental pictures of. And so understanding how this all came around was really amazing to me, and a real eye-opener to understand that this philosophy of Charlotte Mason is not only easier to implement, but it also makes more sense with understanding how the brain is working and how those who have been really good spellers in my house have been really good readers first. And uh, so I just really, this really speaks to me that this method of how this works was successful. My son, um, 
his dictation increased greatly. We continued it into high school and it was amazing to me how fast his spelling improved through dictation. And not only that, but his grammar and um, the placements of uh, the periods and quotation marks and all of those had really improved immensely over the dictation sessions that we would be doing with him. Um, it's important to understand that when you're dictating to a child, they're not seeing it. They do not have um, something in front of them to help them recollect. It is oral. The teacher would repeat clause by clause for the child to then be able to write, never repeating, only saying it one time. Um, and the goal was for them to be able to not only spell correctly what is being said, but to remember where um, to place the punctuations and the capitalizations um, and to be able to do it graphic grammar, grammar correct um, by the time they were done. So you may be asking, what is it that I dictate to my child? Um, I know that there are dictation books out there that you could be using. Um, you could use scriptures, you could be using poetry, you could be using quotes, you could be um, selections of literature, you could be using um, books that are already created for you for the very purpose of dictation. What's important is using what works for you. Having resources available to you already may be the easiest or investing in dictation programs um, where you can go from one thing to the next. Whatever works best for your budget and for your time would be what I would recommend. I would recommend dictation be something that you implement uh, several times a week um, if you can't fit it in daily. And then also understand that you want to see progress. If a child is struggling with the same word again and again, make their own little spelling list where not that they're given to you, to them, but where you can set aside some time once a week to work on these problem words that they have not captured the correct spelling yet and work with it the way that Charlotte Mason would work with it in the way that you would write the word on the board and have the child see if they can remember it. Erase it and have them write it. Um, if they start to make it mistake, stop them. Don't let them see that word written wrong again. Have them write it. And have them practice it several times if they continue to misspell it. And next thing you know, they'll have that visual picture of it and they'll be able to spell it correctly. That is what I would recommend. That is what we did with my oldest son as he was walking through it. And that is what we're doing with um, our third child. And so it's really important to understand the concept of why and when and to be able to get joy in knowing that it really isn't that difficult to have a speller. And for someone to really experience a horrific speller can tell you that there is joy in doing dictation. It may sound tedious, it may sound overwhelming, but it is a lot easier to implement than a spelling program is. Uh, it is a lot easier to implement this way when you really can understand how wonderful it is for a child who struggles with spelling to be able to conquer it. I hope this session has helped you a lot. I would like to explain to you a little bit about a project I've been working on. Uh, it's the Charlotte Mason Way eCourse. It's available for $64 and I'm real excited because it's a it's a collection of 14 videos similar to the self, longer in length, um, and being able to share with you how to implement the Charlotte Mason way from preschool all the way through high school and answering the basic questions that I know I've heard over the years of not only homeschoolers, but my own experience being able to share with other homeschoolers around the world about how important and how effective this method can really be in building self learners devoted to learning from home and being able to find joy in homeschooling again leaving all that stress of a curriculum to choose from and embracing a, a method, embracing a philosophy of education that has proven to work for a long time and really building strong focus on your home with the understanding that education is an atmosphere, a discipline, a life, and that you just need a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of help to get you over those obstacles of not knowing where to start or where to keep going. 
I look forward to sharing with you the C course. And if you subscribe to Teachers of Good Things, you'll receive a coupon code for $10 off. And so that just makes it only $54. A wonderful investment that you could be using. It comes with lifetime using of the videos, as well as support from not only myself, but also other users of the eCourse that you can communicate together and share what you're finding of insights, as well as being able to walk with each other for journeys for your entire life of owning these, this wonderful membership eCourse. I hope you're excited about this as much as I am excited to offer it. But above all things, I hope that your homeschool journey in your home will find joy in your everyday. God bless.